I am Jeremiah Matthew Davis, and I am the artistic director here at Oklahoma Contemporary. We are in the Kirkpatrick Main Gallery here at the Art Center, and on view currently is an exhibition called Open World Video Games and Contemporary Art. This exhibition explores the intersection between video game design, production, technology, history, and the tools and trade of contemporary art practice, incorporating those ideas and blending them together in a single exhibition. There have been many exhibitions over the years that focus specifically on the art of video games or video games as art, but this is something that's a little bit different from that trajectory. It's actually working with contemporary artists who are inspired by video games themselves, the technology behind them, or the way that human beings interact with video games, and they're mining those titles, uh, those technologies, those platforms to create unique works of art. Uh, so in this case, we have many artists from all around the world who are all inspired by video games. Many of them grew up playing video games. Many of them continue to play video games uh, as part of their um, entertainment, part of their learning. And so they fold all of those things into their art practice. Uh, as we all know, video games, it's not the days of the 70s or the 80s where people thought it was rotting your brain or it was a horribly negative influence. Now multiple generations have grown up playing video games and indeed 65% of American adults regularly play video games. And in fact, with the rise of mobile devices, we now see that a majority of gamers are women, which is quite the reverse from where we were even 20 years ago. Uh, so this ex exhibition explores all of that, incorporates fun and definitely a healthy dose of nostalgia, but also finds artists that are wrangling with really serious issues like uh, war, peace, the economy, society, the interaction between different groups of people, issues of race, gender, and identity. So it's a, it's a really rich exhibition that you can spend a lot of time learning about and also having some fun while you're at it. Okay, this is uh, one of several works by the artist Tabor Roback, who is uh, born and raised in Portland, Oregon, so American. Uh, in this case, he's taking uh, the idea of a match three game what we all might probably uh, popularly know as Candy Crush or games in the mold of Candy Crush. Uh, and this artist is uh, creating this really spectacular visual uh, moving image of all of these different icons changing and uh, matching and exploding as they move down and across uh, the screens here. Uh, what I love about this work is it, as it is at once both uh, a very a uh, strong replication of that style of video game, but it's also a pretty searing critique. A critique of the attention economy, of the way uh, companies, platforms, uh, certain styles of games seek to capture our attention in order to uh, sell things to us or to sell our data as we continue to input more information into those platforms. Uh, but at the same time, it's mesmerizing to look at. So you'll see these icons here are things that the artist just was able to get off the internet, download them, and then program into the sequence of images that you see. It's not a playable game, rather it's a commentary on games of this style. So again, it's fun, it's interesting, it's mesmerizing, but it also has something quite critical to say. Interestingly, the most mined video game uh, in the entire exhibition with multiple artists either referencing it or literally having the, the video game as part of their art object is Grand Theft Auto, the, the series of multiple different games. In this case, uh, the artist Joan Pambukas is really fascinated by uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, which uh, sort of is a uh, Los Angeles uh, appropriation in, in the, the world of that video game. Of course, Grand Theft Auto is controversial. Uh, when it came out uh, for the PlayStation platform in the uh, late 90s, early aughts, it was known for its extreme violence and its playability. You could explore the world or you could choose to, to do the actual game itself. Um, so that sparked a, a good amount of, of healthy controversy. In this case, the artist was fascinated by watching her younger brothers play some of these video games. And even though uh, in, in the case of Grand Theft Auto, it was so violent, she noticed a lot of really beautiful imagery that was also part of the game. Um, so that inspired her to take several still images from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, uh, Morning, Firelight, and Pulse in the case of these three beautiful prints. And she manipulated those images a little bit to create these prints. And you can see, upon looking at them, if you um, analyze the color palette and if you've played the game, you will recognize uh, some of the design elements in these works. But of course, stripped of the context of uh, the criminal underworld that is so uh, present in that game, 
and really more thinking about uh, the beautiful sunsets on the West Coast. So again, a fascinating uh, collection of a uh, triptych in this case of objects by Pambucus um, that are really leaning in and engaging with the game, but also producing something of great beauty. Here we are in the middle of Feng Meng Bo's Long March Restart. This is a, pl a fully playable video game with multiple levels. You'll recognize it as a platformer or a side-scrolling game. Uh, in this case, your primary character is a general who has uh, the uh, tool of a projectile, which is an exploding can of Coca-Cola. Uh, you're going through all of these levels of uh, games that are highly recognizable, like Double Dragon, Contra, Super Mario Brothers, Street Fighter II, and you're almost uh, impervious to any kind of uh, aggression from the video game characters. You can fall if uh, there's a gap in the floor, uh, but otherwise you just continue to march through level, through the level, and as you complete one level, uh, the screens will switch. So on the other side of this gallery, there's another set uh, of projectors projecting the same image, uh, but it's either in close-up or in long form. And as you complete a level, they switch. So you're constantly asked to toggle between the two as you're playing the game. Uh, what I love about this is, yes, it's a playable game. It's fun. Uh, it's recognizable from anybody who is really deep into Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo. But uh, it's actually referencing Chinese history. Uh, the Long March is a reference to uh, the 5,000-mile trek across China uh, that uh, Mao Zedong led uh, the Red Army in retreat from the Chinese Nationalist Army during the Civil War in the 1930s. Um, so this is the artist's attempt to wrangle with some of that history and gamify it. So uh, it is at once a game that's fun to play, but it is also engaging with um, a central uh, moment in Chinese history in the 20th century. Here we are in the Learning Gallery. Education is core to our mission here at Oklahoma Contemporary. So each time we mount an exhibition in the main gallery, we always provide a space here in the Learning Gallery for further exploration of the ideas, the themes, the materials that the artists are wrangling with. So in this case, of course, uh, a lot of the different activities that you can uh, engage in, the information that you can read and learn about is connected to video games. So in this case, we have this uh, lovely timeline titled A Ridiculously Brief and Incomplete History of Video Games, which goes through some of, though not all, the key moments in the development of video games starting in the mid 20th century up until much more recently. We also have uh, fun elements of interaction for visitors. So right next to me here is a way for people to imagine uh, what kind of a problem in the world that a video game can solve. You can write it down on these Tetris pieces and then place it directly onto the wall. Uh, we've had lots of uh, fun engagement here. So again, some of the things that I'm reading here about what, a, what could a video game, what kind of problem could a video game solve? We have revenge, climate change, boredom, accessibility, wars, monsters, uh, a lot of different perspectives from our visitors as they're walking through the gallery and engaging with it. Uh, additionally, behind me, there's a really fun but extremely difficult game that requires three players working collaboratively to play. It's called Kind of a Big Deal, and you are moving through the game, a platformer game, uh, side-scrolling style, as a dill pickle, who's just trying to catch a break. One player needs to use the jump button, one player uses a charge button, and the other player navigates the character front and back and also um, has the ability uh, to slide. So um, it's a, a fun game that requires uh, cooperation and collaboration. And we've seen a few people, a few sets of three people who are really, really good at it. Uh, so we invite everybody to come down, see the show, and then play some games while you're at it. And I want to give a, a big round of applause to our education and the public programs team. They did a wonderful job designing this space. As we've seen visitors coming through the galleries, particularly during Game Fest this past weekend, there were lots of people drawing their own video game characters at a station behind me, playing kind of a big deal, learning from the different stations, and really engaging in this space and spending a lot of time here. That's really what it's all about, is providing additional access and other paths of entry to the work that's on view in the gallery.